Hey, wherever you are in the world today, I welcome you to another 30 minutes of Soulful Living here at Empower Radio. I'm not supposed to put dates in, but I have to say this is my first show of 2021. It's my 10th year and I am super excited to be sharing the screen with my friend Jeannie Francis. Um, I have to tell you a, a little story here. Um, we were introduced from a mutual friend, Jody Knittle, a few years ago. And some of you might know that I fractured my femur in October of 2019. And the first thing I did when I got home was shoot Jeannie over an email and say, oh my God, I fractured my femur. What do I do? What do I start drinking? What do I start taking? And she is a master herbalist among many other masteries um reiki reflexology energy work she's the plant queen there's a book behind me called women healers of the world she should be in that book because she's amazing so i've said enough for now and welcome Jeannie. i'm so excited we finally got this going thank you terry i miss you you know we're miles away but we really aren't <laughs> no you know thank god for technology and Absolutely. Spirit to Soul Connections, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Jeannie has a website, Spirit to Soul, S-O-L-E. And um, she, she blows my mind with the information that she has available as far as herbalism goes and even reflexology. You know, I also um, was in a meditation one day and I asked if there was something I could do for osteoporosis and I saw a cat's claw in my vision and I reached out to Jeannie once again and said is this something I should be doing and she said absolutely and whipped me up an amazing tonic so uh, let's give the listeners a bit of history so I can stop talking this is your show well <laughs> And it's it's always when I start talking, I think, wow, have I done all these things? But my herbal training started at the age of eight. My parents were very good friends with Jim and Betty Woodford, who started an animal refuge in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. And she would take me out into the woods and she would teach me about different edibles and different things and different herbs to bring back so that we would make little healing salves for the animals. As an eight-year-old, I just thought this was really fun. I didn't think there was anything different about it. And along with Betty, I was also trained on the uh, Rancocas uh, Pow Wow Center. I was trained by the Lenny Lenape. Uh, the women would take me out into the fields. And really, it's because I'm ADHD and I get up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm ready to get going. And I am sure they did this stuff just to keep me occupied. <laughs> but I... I come from a long line of gardeners and farmers connected to New Jersey, and I just have always adored plants. I remember saying to people when I was probably about 12, 14 years old, plants talk to me. Don't they talk to you? They tell me what they do. And people have always mm -hmm. looked at me as a really odd one. Well, um, I embrace it. And I know that my listeners will embrace that too. It's not odd. It's magical. It's beautiful. And it is a tremendous gift. Thank you. I was, my training began on a property that was owned by a man named Dr. James Still, who was the black doctor of the pines in the 1800s. I still make his medicines. Wow. They're still very viable today. Um, and I love how the plants work with people in a gentle way. Sometimes when we're, and, and there's a place for all of us. There's a place for pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. You, yourself, mm -hmm. the way you did, you needed that help. But yeah. I also think, um, we need to re-empower our people. So especially young mamas, you know, yeah. who may have a baby that doesn't feel so well. Well, rather than waiting three or four days to get into a doctor, we can get out some chamomile tea. We can start doing some things to ease that child into back into better health. And mm -hmm. I believe we need to be using more plant materials, such as a plant-based diet, um, and we need to get back to these gifts that have been given to us and we have forgotten how to use them. We need to help our next generations to be able to look at a dandelion and no, don't spray Roundup on that. That's an amazing healer. When you see chickweed, which is one of my favorites that pops up in the spring, uh, she's full of calcium, 
She's full of vitamin C and vitamin K. It's wonderful on a salad. I've had some of my herbal students. Um, we used to do a cooking class when we all met in real time. Yeah. And you know, my students have made the chickweed into fritters and made chickweed into amazing things. And so when we realize that we have been given these gifts at our feet, at our hands, and in our trees, our world looks differently. I have one graduated herbal student who's also a shaman. And she said at graduation, she said, I remember the morning that I walked out of my house and it dawned on me that all my tools are here at hand. Mm. Oh, that gave me chills from head to toe. That's really amazing. And so when we realize that we walk in this beautiful pharmacopoeia of a world, that we don't need to be running for some type of pill. We mm -hmm. need to go in, ask ourselves what we need, observe what we need. And I also say, you know, the saying that um, when the student's ready, the teacher arrives. Well, I say when the student's ready, the plant arrives. Oh, I love that. And I've had students come to class and go, I got this out of my yard. What is this? And I'm like, oh, let's study that today. Mm -hmm. so, oh, what um, a good, great way to empower your students. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. I'm still flying on a high situation. Um, my students, uh, this is the 11th month, so we do a final. And because of my amazing daughter, she has made sure that I could do all this online. And my 11 students this year totally amazed me. They made products that just made me, at one point, tears were running down my face. Aww. And she said, are you okay? I'm like, I'm joyful. I know I can let all of you out into the world and I won't fear what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Well, and one of the things I really love and appreciate about you and your teachings is that you mean what you say. Like you, you, that comes from your heart that you are so excited to see the students go out into the world and be able to help other people. There's no fear in you of, of them bettering you. I think if anything, from what I've known of you, is that you would like to challenge them to be better than you, right? Be yep. more than I am. Yeah, yeah. Show me, show me yeah. the way. Yeah, I, I think that's really beautiful and authentic. And it's one of the things that's really lacking in a lot of the teachings and teachers that show up in the world today. So thank you for doing it that way. Thank you for being so just full of love and ready to rock the world. Well, I have to thank a friend. Um, I grew up with Francine Stills Hicks, who is the great, great, great granddaughter of Dr. James Still. And a few years ago, the state did a DVD and I was the herbalist on the DVD. Oh, wow. And after it was debuted, we a bunch of us that were in the video went out for some coffee. And Francine, who I've known since kindergarten, in fact, teachers wrote on their reports, don't put Francine and Jeannie in the same room because they'll never be <laughs> teaching. So <sighs> she came to me and she said to me, are you going to die with the legacy in you or are you going to share it? Mm -hmm. And I came home and my nose was a little bent out of joint. Why would she have said that to me? But I sat up all night and that's how I wrote the curriculum on how I wanted to teach this class. I wanted to teach it using the Native American medicine wheel, I wanted to teach how I make medicines during moon signs, during the full moon, during the waning moon, depending on what um, energy, as we call it, plant energy, what are we trying to extract out of that plant to get mm -hmm. into medicine? Mm -hmm. And then I just started teaching. And at the time I had a brick and mortar store and I had a very little room, so I could only take on six students. And I would give them a thorough interview Wanted to make sure that they understood what we were teaching, how we were yeah. teaching, and what I expected of them out of a student. Uh, this wasn't a freebie. This mm -hmm. wasn't a walk in the park. I want you to execute what you've learned. I want to know that when you go home and you are dealing with your child, that you're not going to do something harmful. Mm -hmm. Because at most, I follow that, you know, do no harm. And so yeah. do no harm could also be that I just don't teach this anymore because it hasn't been taken the way it needed to be taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember one time um, 
you know, when essential oils became really big, and I, I did not know much about them at all, but uh, somebody had said to me, my daughter was having some issues, and they said, well, just put a few drops of lemon oil in her bath, and oh my God, she was on fire, and yeah. um, I called, uh, you know, the emergency line uh, for drugs, and, and they had no idea what to do about it, so I'm Googling, and but I just remember thinking, shame on that person and me as her mom. You know, I trusted that this person knew what they were doing. And yet there was some level of education, obviously, that was missing because my daughter was on fire. Yes. Um, so it has to be experiential and it has to come from that place of do no harm. Well, it's also... Um I know what we you're doing. People that are selling these essential oils that don't understand plant energy. Mm -hmm. So how I explain it to my herbalist, first of all, essential oils are never ingested. In order to take a measurement of a dram, which is two and a half drops, to get two and a half drops of essential oil of lemon takes 48 to 62 whole lemons. Wow. It's a lot. That's a lot of lemons. And so anybody that's on blood thinners should not be using any essential oil of lemon. Sure, you can have a slice of lemon pie, have a little bit of lemon juice in your water, but not all that. That is too hot and too powerful. And you can have someone bleed out. Wow. Wow. Well, and, and even uh, going back to a conversation that you and I had before we even came online, uh, we were talking about the complements of plant medicine and pharmacology, uh, yes. pharma pharmaceuticals, and that um, how you have to know how they work together, yes. you know, and that, like you just said, you can't take lemon oil with the blood thinner. Nope. You know, if, if people are not aware of that, the damage that they can cause can be fatal. It can. And I have had, I have talked to some people who <clears throat> sell these things for two different companies that don't have the training. They get a little pamphlet. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's, I had an, another friend who was having some intestinal problems and he really wasn't telling anybody. And I have another mutual friend that sells through these products yeah. and she had him drinking um, things that he should have been drinking. Within six months, he was in the hospital and had three feet of his intestines removed. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And but even pharmacists are not educated no, on not. the effect that plant medicine can have, even though so many of our pharmaceutical drugs are, are derivatives of plants, but they're not educated on it. And one of the things that I've loved about working with you is that you take it seriously. You want to really get into what is going to work with each other and what's going to have the adverse effect. So beyond the education of our pharmacist. Yes. And there are different things as an herbalist that we uh, approach it differently. When I was making up something for you, I had to realize that um, I'll use this word poster child for osteoporosis. Yes. Light hair, light skin, and light eyes. And that's me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I knew once I was making this product for you that I needed to do things to support your calcium level, mm -hmm. to support your vitamin D level. So that your body could then absorb these plant energies and have it work for you. Mm -hmm. Say if I were dealing with an African-American woman that maybe had broken her femur, I would have dealt with different herbs for that for mm -hmm. different energies. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw a post recently that Brooke Shields fractured her femur. And mm -hmm. I want to send her a note and say, she needs to contact you. Because I have told you many times that I attribute my healing process going so well to the tools I've received from you, from the herbs that I've received from you, I, I, and energy healing and work. But had I not had those, I think I would have had a different story. Well, I think especially uh, when I sent you out the muscle recovery tea. That's my favorite. I, I had 
Yeah. I had made that tea um, because I work out at the gym. I've lost 125 pounds. Um, I stopped putting in what I was putting in and cutting out the negativity. Mm -hmm. And so I was making this tea for other people at the gym. In fact, my trainer was just so surprised that I would work out and he would call me the next day and like, are you in pain? I'm like, nope. No. Um, so when I heard you got hurt, I sent that along. And I thought, well, I know I make this for people working out, but I hope it works for her. And then when you called me a few days later and said, I'm not in any pain. Yeah. I also had a, another customer who had a nephew who was a mountain climber and fell 75 feet down a mountain. Wow. Oh my I said, gosh. To her, you've got to get him this tea. I will make it in a pound bag for you. You've mm -hmm. got to get this tea. She called me within a week and she said, he's sleeping now. He, he can't believe it. And I said, well, either can I, <laughs> but if it's working, let's keep it going. Yeah. And it's, you know, I don't have any hidden secrets in there. There isn't any little hidden ingredients. It's things that you buy, things that you can forage, you know, from your yard, from fields. It's all at people's hands. They can get these products and mix it. It's not that hard. That's amazing. Uh, so listeners, I'm having a conversation with Jeannie Francis. You can find all of her information here on the Soulful Living page and Empower Radio. Her website is spirit 2 Soul, S O L E dot net. Is it dot net or dot com? Dot com. Dot com. Spirit to Soul Connection dot com. And do yourself a favor. Um, check it out. Order some of that muscle recovery tea. And and if there's anything else that is going on in your life, reach out to them because they're wonderful about responding and seeing what they have that they can create particularly for you. Don't be shy about it. Um, so Jeannie, we obviously are in a pandemic. You know, we have a lot of stuff going on right now with uh, immunities and stress and um, inner stress of not connecting with people. Yes. I'd like to give the listeners some ideas on um, number one, what could they do? to build some immunities and what kind of products do you have available that can help them with that right now? Um, one of the things that I've really, I am the president of the South Jersey chapter of the American Herbalist Guild. So I've got a lot of neat herbalists that I follow and we have been dealing with this issue. And one of our things is to keep our immune system really running well. So I have been suggesting to people to up their vitamin C, uh, zinc, vitamin D. If you can get yourself elderberries, make elderberry syrup, buy elderberry syrup. Keep that going in the body at all times. Don't relax. Try to keep any type of mucus out of your lungs. So I would stay, say if you're getting a little congested, get away from all milk products, um, anything that would cause um, phlegmy things because this is a big lung burden issue and we've got to keep those lungs functioning. Mm -hmm. I also tell people, because people don't get it, that when we have a cold or a flu, we can't get rid of it unless our liver is working and is at a high function. So that when you take over-the-counter medications for that cold and flu, it slows down your liver. So no, you're not going to get rid of it. That liver needs to flush those germs out. Drink a lot of water, um, I have a, uh, a liver tea, a joyful liver. Um, I drink all the time um, just to keep myself flushing. Uh, I suggest to people drink a lot of water, a lot of warm water with lemon in it. All these things will build our immune system and keep us strong. I remember when I had COVID when I, last year that I had picked up from you the elderberry syrup kit. Yes. And that was amazing. You just boil it on the stove and strain it out. And I, another thing that I am quite sure helped my recovery process. And what's joyful about elderberry syrup, whether you put honey in it, sugar in it or nothing, it's sweet. Children don't mind taking it. Yeah. And it's our children that, you know, we keep talking about the people that passed, but we're not talking about the children that are getting COVID and then have these uh, long-term symptoms that mm -hmm. are 
bizarre, that are crazy, that have no, you know, like we can't even connect the dots. Yeah. They're so um, spastic, just mm -hmm. spastic. And that each person has different symptoms. There's not like a pattern. You know, right. doctors look for a pattern. We as herbalists like to try to find patterns and sometimes there's not. Um, but this COVID is really challenging. Mm -hmm. And what about stress? You know, people are so stressed out about not working, about uh, working from home, dealing with children, having to juggle all of that in their family lives and not being able to um, connect with people live and eliminate some of that stress. Get, get a hug for God's sake. Know, we can't even do that, right? So what are some of the things that they can do uh, from an herbalist perspective to help relieve that stress? So there are some herbs that can be used as a tea, uh, such as lemon balm, which is, the it tastes great. I try to drink it every day. It is a natural nervine, but it doesn't make you sleepy like chamomile does. You know, we, mm -hmm. we don't, we want to be calm, but we don't want to be sleeping on the desk while we're at work and can't keep mm -hmm. our eyes open. So right. lemon balm is wonderful. Um, milk thistle is great again for the liver, but for calming. Um, you know, so there are different herbs that can be used and you can drink it as a tea. Mm -hmm. You can find it as a tincture. Um, I also, lavender, right now, lavender uh, is very helpful for those people who, um, see my, my grandson, if you're near lavender, he's like dead asleep. So, but yesterday in my herbal class, while we were doing our final, I was surprised that at least seven of my students all did it on lavender and how they use lavender and how lavender helps them stay calm and stay focused, but without falling heavy duty asleep. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you're talking about sleep and um, I know insomnia is a big issue with people right now. So you mentioned lavender, you mentioned chamomile. Is there a combination? Uh, can they order teas from your website that have these in it? Uh, are there any drops that people can any kind yes. of tincture? I know I, I asked a lot of questions. That's okay. You can ask all you want. I was told in third grade that I asked too many questions and to shut up. Oh, my God. Fire <laughs> that teacher. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't follow her steps. <laughs> yeah. So there are. We have, a, um, we have a blend that we call Cup of Sunshine, which has lemon balm, lemon verbena, lemongrass, and lemon peel. I happen to love the flavor of lemon. Um, but after about the age of 30, uh, fresh lemon would upset my stomach. So I needed to make myself something so that I could have the, this taste. Um, and all three, all three of those plants, not the lemon peel, but the lemon balm, the lemongrass and the lemon verbena, I all grow in my garden. And they now grow in the garden at my daughter's house in Michigan, because while we were there during COVID, we put in a whole children's garden. So my granddaughters know how to go out and harvest rosemary and harvest vegetables. And so that was a wonderful project to do with the children. And still to today, uh, uh, you know, when I call in, I'm like, I asked Lauren, the 10 year old, so what's coming up in the garden? She goes, Graham, right through the snow, the rosemary's coming right through the snow. I'm like, I That's know. That's amazing. That's beautiful. That's so, really beautiful. At first I thought my son-in-law was letting me put in the gardens to keep me occupied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then it turned into a family project. And after we came back to New Jersey, they added four more raised beds. Wow. That's amazing. So when you come back uh, in May, because we're all expecting you back here in May, um, what will be popping up at that point? You know, what's, what's a good spring plant? What are the first ones that come up? Uh, are you talking like a, a culinary herb or a weed? Let's talk, well, the weeds, I'm sure, but something culinary, something that even um, that people can use for their health. What's it, what are the first so, ones to pop up? Uh, I know that they're, um, they will have a lot of parsley. They'll have rosemary. They have sage. They have fennel, which my three-year-old granddaughter calls the candy plant. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they've got different sages. Um, I'm sure my daughter's going to start basil. Because in New Jersey, we can't do a New Jersey tomato without basil. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You can't hear either. 
it's like a sin, right? Yes, it is. And so they'll, they still have chard coming up. Um, I had them grow. I grew from seed. It's called a uh, rainbow chard. So each stem is like pink and red and yellow. I wanted things Ooh. that really entice the children. I know they'll have daikon red radishes ready to dig. They'll have beets ready to dig and they'll have winter carrots ready to dig. That's awesome. Well, Hey Jeannie, we only have a few minutes left here and, um, I want to talk a little bit about your upcoming herbalist class, the certification. Uh, can you give us an idea of like what the modules are like, how long the class lasts? It, it is a one year class certification. Mm -hmm. We meet on the third Sunday of the month. We study between seven and 10 plants a month. We make wow. two um, remedies. <clears throat> um, I give recipes. We study the moon signs. We study the Native American medicine wheel. We talk about honoring the earth. I talk about harvesting because when I harvest, I don't take everything. I leave half. Mm -hmm. Before I harvest, I either donate hair or tobacco. I open the four corners. I thank my ancestors. I ask them to join me. Um, and I pray. And as I, we make these medicines, I play what my daughter and I call la 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 music in the background and we get yeah. into a mindset of kindness. Mm -hmm. And um, I teach all my herbalists, even if they're not Reikis, I tell them we all have this blessed energy. Yeah. Please, while you're making this medicine, make it an honor, make it with love, mm -hmm. share, share from your heart, the goodness. Mm -hmm. So this one class lasts a year, we go 12 months. You will learn all these things. You will learn different body structures. You will learn um, every month we discuss another body organ. We also discuss issues from IBS to um, bone issues to skin issues. We learn about, um, I teach about facial reading and tongue reading because these are part of what I use as an assessment. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't get it as I'm talking to them. I'm looking at their tongue and going, okay, mm -hmm, it's a mm -hmm. salad is a deep crease. So I can tell by the coating on the tongue um, what's going on in your inner body and your intestines. So these are all things that they learn. And when they step out of this class after a year, <clears throat> they, they have the tools to be an herbalist. I have mm. taught professionals from chiropractors, uh, psychotherapist. Um, I had one student who worked with children that uh, were suffering with brain damage. Um, wow. So we work with all these things. We talk about children who are ADHD, children who are dyslexic. These are just children to me. These, and we just need tools. Um, our they schools, learn differently. The schools don't provide them. And they are just as capable as everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, um, we're down to the wire. We're, we are at ground zero, right? Uh, so I, I really want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of the ways that you have uh, lit up my life and this beautiful connection that we have. I love for my guests. Uh, to leave the listeners with something that they can take out into the day, a thought, um, an insight. I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but what would that be for you? Well, I can tell you because my thought for today is in New Jersey, we're getting snow again. And this morning on Facebook, there are lots of people grumbling. And I said, I'm not. My trees, my weeds, and those of you that know me know I'm uh, a daylily addict. I have about 180 yes. days. <laughs> they are all getting nutrients from this. Mm -hmm. So I am in rejoicing that this is more snow than we've had probably in about 12 or 14 years. But the roots, the roots are happy. Wow. That's awesome. And so are we. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to seeing you online, but hopefully hugging you in May. I want to hug you so bad. I, <laughs> I love you. Thank you for the honor and thank you for the blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And have a beautiful day. It's a gorgeous day. You too. Thank you. Thank you.